in a cartoon, a wife says to her husband, hasn't 2020 taught you to stop saying, cheer up, things can't possibly get any worse. Amen. I think we can begin to identify with that. But we might ask, was the wife being a bit cynical? And you say, okay, what do you mean by cynical? Well, cynicism is defined as an attitude of suspicion where you believe the future is bleak and that people are acting only out of self-interest. We've known some cynical people. Perhaps we have at times been cynical ourselves. Tommy South, in speaking of Ecclesiastes, says Solomon has figured out by trial and error that the real meaning of life was not life under the sun, but in the purposes of God. He knew that man's best choice is to enjoy life as best he can, trusting in God's goodness and ultimate plan. In chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, we note what he said. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. But it seems that Solomon had trouble holding that thought. He was capable of lapsing into a deep cynicism about life. In our text this morning, chapter 3, verse 16, through chapter 4, verse 3, we find Solomon immersed in such a mood since life is so difficult and unfair, he concludes that the dead are better off than the living, and that the most fortunate of all those are those who've never been born at all. Now this was not Solomon's consistent belief or his last word on the subject of whether or not a life is worth living. He says in chapter 9, verse 4, Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. This is quite the opposite sentiment which he had expressed earlier. Solomon, like us, was probably subject to a variety of moods. At times he had a negative outlook on life. At other times he could see it in a very positive light. In our text this morning, his mood is obviously pretty foul, so much so that he probably would have said a hearty amen to the words of Shakespeare's Macbeth, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day, to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death, out, out, brief candle, life's but a waking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The sentiments expressed by Solomon and by Macbeth are not uncommon. But what caused Solomon to feel the way he did? In the text, he identifies two causes for his despair about life. Read with me from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16, through chapter 4, verse 3. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, God will bring judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. I also thought, as for men, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Man's fate is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. Man has no advantage over the animal. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place. All come from dust, and to dust all return. Who knows if the spirit of man rises upward? and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work, because that is his lot. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Again, 
I looked and saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors, and they have no comforter. And I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive, but better than both is he who has not yet been, who has not seen the evil that is done under the sun. Denny Petrillo observes of our text, the text continues with a focus on justice, which God will deliver at the proper time. Even Solomon had observed widespread corruption and affliction of the poor. Solomon says that one cause for his despair is the universality of injustice. We note verse 16 and chapter 4 verse 1. Solomon recognized that life can be grossly unfair and in the very situations and places where justice ought to be served, exactly the opposite frequently happens. The circumstances are too common to need illustration. We live in a world of injustice and corruption of power where those who most need help get it the least and where man lords it over man to do his hurt. Injustice is depressing. We can withstand a great deal of suffering and hardship as long as everything works out okay in the end. We always want Cinderella in the fairy tale when all is said and done to wear the glass slipper and live happily ever after with the prince. But in real life, as often as not, the ugly stepsister is rewarded instead, regardless of how mean and nasty she may be. With so much sadness and unfairness about life, there is plenty of room for the kind of cynicism Solomon displays in this passage. Think of the thousands of babies who have been born afflicted with AIDS, whose little bodies are racked with pain and with a craving they cannot understand through no fault of their own, but through the wickedness of sexually immoral and or drug-abusing parents. Now Solomon obviously saw plenty of this very kind of injustice. We notice chapter 5, verse 8. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. Chapter 8, verse 9. All this I saw as I applied my mind to everything done under the sun. There is a time when a man lords it over others to his own hurt. Verse 11. When the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, the hearts of the people are filled with schemes to do wrong. Verse 14 of chapter 8. There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. Righteous men who get what the wicked deserve and wicked men who get what the righteous deserve. In chapter 9, verse 11, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift, or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Yes, Solomon had observed many things that he knew to be unjust. In all of Solomon's research, he had discovered that when mankind is involved, perfect order is not seen. Men pervert justice and turn it into wickedness. An opportunity for fair treatment may present itself but men will look for ways to turn it into wicked advantage for themselves. Man has the ability to use almost anything good as an instrument for wickedness. Judges, kings, and business owners, 
have been placed into positions where they should be fair and equitable. Sins such as covetousness cause those in authority to fail to extend the justice that is due. We can all identify at some point with Solomon's observation. Life is frequently unfair. And injustice often makes us angry and depressed. When our oldest daughter Angie was little, one of her favorite lines was, that's not fair. And after several of these statements had been made, Debbie one time said to her, life's not fair. I think it really shook Angie up at the time. And as she grew into maturity, as she's now a wife and mother, as she is working, yes, at times, life's not fair. It's easy to become cynical in that situation. But we will see that there is an answer to that cynicism. In verses 18 through 21 of chapter 3, Solomon laments the fact that death is inevitable for everyone. It seems that he had the idea that when people die, the same thing happens to us as happens to animals. Just like Rover, we're dead all over. Remember, though, that this is an under-the-sun observation. Under the sun is used a number of times in Ecclesiastes. And it refers to life here on earth, a life viewed without God. From a strictly earthly perspective, this is how things appear. From all outward appearances, people and animals end up the same way, dead. But notice that Solomon is not denying an afterlife. Rather, he is frankly, frankly confessing that he does not know whether in the final analysis there is any difference in death for people as opposed to animals. He asks, who knows what, that the breath of man ascends upward and the breath of the beast descends downward to the earth. Still, death is certain for both mankind and beast. When we contemplate how fragile our lives really are, it can be somewhat depressing. Chapter 3, verse 20. All go to the same place, all come from dust, and to dust all return. Michael Eaton comments <clears throat> that we are made from the material that constitutes the world in general contributes to our frailty. Dust and breath are not a stable combination. We may try to deny it, but it is true for every one of us. We cannot be too important, too rich, too famous, too busy, too well educated, or too successful to die. Death comes to all. Well, no wonder Solomon became despondent as he contemplated the inevitability of death. Though he was king and possessed enormous power and wealth, when it came to dust to dust, he was just like any poor peasant or any animal in the field. And so we all are. It is not hard to figure out why Solomon became cynical. And it is not surprising that so many today are just like him. But cynicism is a dead-end street which we all need to avoid. Hubert Van Zeller has observed by letting themselves be cynical, unhappy people aggravate their melancholy. <clears throat> they are like a dog which tears at its wounded paw so as to hurt the pain. There has to be a better way to respond to the sadness and injustice of life than to become a cynic. Even in the midst of his cynical mood, Solomon gives two clues as to how we can avoid becoming cynical about life. First, we should not dwell on the negatives. Even in the midst of his cynicism, Solomon admitted that life is not all bad 
for most of us. In verse 22 he says, And I have seen that nothing is better than that man should be happy in his activities, for that is his lot. It is possible to find pleasure and joy, even in the midst of injustice and with the prospect of certain death facing all of us. Cynics become cynics because they have chosen to major in the bad stuff of life. To avoid cynicism, we need not deny the bad, but rather keep it in perspective by also recognizing the good when we see it. Second, we should remember that all wrongs will someday be righted. And above the sun truth is stated in verse 17. God, I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. There will be a judgment day. Justice will be done. There is an old saying that what goes around comes around. That includes even the worst injustices of life. In Oklahoma, I encountered a couple. Their son had died. He had died <clears throat> working in his garage on a vehicle. The vehicle had fallen on him. But there were suspicious things about this. His wife and he were having problems. She had a boyfriend. There was enough evidence to go to trial. But they were eventually found basically not guilty or there wasn't enough evidence to convict them. The parents were an older couple. Well, they're about what my age is now, I guess. But they were older than me, and they were greatly bothered by what they saw as injustice. But they, and all of us, when we see the injustice around us, should remember that a judgment day will come, and the judge will make no mistakes. Eventually, all things will be set right by a just and merciful God. God's judgment is not only the punishment of the wicked, it also involves the rewarding of the righteous and the vindication of the oppressed. Remember the rich man and Lazarus? The rich man had it great here. Lazarus got scraps, if anything. But when they died, the tables were turned. Scriptures, the scriptures teach Christians not to fear the judgment, but to look forward to it. Judgment Day will be that great occasion when all that has ever gone wrong in this life will be reversed. What makes men and women distinctive is the potential to have a relationship with God. The animals weren't designed to do that. They can't do that. But you and I, all humanity, can have a relationship with God. We can call him Father. Our choice, simple. We can be a cynic and deny what Jesus offers, or we can become, we can be a believer and receive life.